Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, right, it's Saturday, the 10th of February. Um, normally, I start with something along the lines of, uh, you know, before I go any further, I just want to say I've got nothing to say this morning. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I'm all out of announcements. So um, I'll crack straight on with the comments on the last uh, video. Dave Taylor, breakfast with Tony, Weetabix and a cup of tea. <laughs> Any better way to start the day? Um, I love the longer instalments. I do enjoy doing them, Dave. And as long as you guys keep giving me things to talk about and throwing questions at me and all that sort of thing, um, yeah, I'd like to ideally to get them in under an hour or just under an hour. Um, I think after the 60 minute mark, I think people's um, attention span seems to go a bit. I know you guys seem to like it, but um they're a bugger to cobble together when they're over an hour uh, because obviously you get um sort of three sections because this phone that i'm using will only record for 30 minutes so i can only do 30 minutes at a time um and if i'm doing sort of an hour and a quarter or an hour and a half that's three 30 minute sections that have got to be cobbled together um, and the software that i'm using which is brilliant by the way because i can just enter it all into the software and leave it running it takes about probably six to eight hours to cobble together an hour and a half worth of video so um, ideally I'd like to keep it to under an hour um, plus I mean it, it, I need plenty to talk about if I'm going to go on for sort of 90 minutes I need loads of things to talk about and to be fair you lot have always um, kept me going with that so uh, yeah I'm glad you like the longer installments say but I, I'm fairly sure they won't all um, be like that but who the hell knows we'll see um, some observations to come tomorrow oh god <laughs> I always look forward to your observations Dave um, you're like Jason you you basically type out a manuscript <laughs> and it's great because it, like I say it gives me plenty to uh, to sort of talk about so yeah i look forward to hearing your your thoughts mate um if they come after i've recorded this i'll try and cobble them to the uh, to the end sort of thing so that i do get them in but failing that it'll be on the uh, the week after but we'll see how we go Steve, our newest member hi tony just watch your video chat i enjoyed it thoroughly despite its length the length of an old movie <laughs> as i've just say under an hour will, will be perfect for me if i can do it um, but every time I think on a Saturday, I look at the notes and I think I'm never going to make 45 minutes, let alone 90. Um, all of a sudden I get comments coming in from, um, Saturday's video and all sorts of other bits. And all of a sudden I'm over an hour again. So, uh, um, as I say, you keep throwing things at me. I'll keep talking about them. So thanks for the shout out. It is much appreciated. And for mentioning my comment about dial of destiny, which both kind of felt a little surreal is he talking to me <laughs> it does kind of feel like that i love getting shout outs um but like you you listen to it and you think i can't believe they're actually talking to me especially when um i don't know whether jason's given me a shout out yet jason um Kerr, our ginger ninja but to get a shout out from australia wow <laughs> that would be something so yeah i do kind of get it it does kind of feel a bit weird when you realize that somebody on the end of youtube um you know hundreds of miles away or even thousands of miles away or continents away is actually talking to you so yeah i do kind of get that um i am very sorry to hear about your mother's passing mothers are generally the hardest ones to deal with when they go i myself have that day to come so i don't envy you um i guess she lived a full and long life but still that is no consolation so i'm truly gutted for you um thanks for that steve appreciate that um it's taking some getting used to um the weirdest part of it for me is not going up there every day uh, because everybody that I work with pretty much knows that um, every single day straight from work I go straight to Morrison's to pick up some shopping for her um, and then I go around and I basically just look after her for two or three hours um, she's been bedridden for quite a while she had been um, and that's the bit that's taking the getting used to is not going up there every day um, normally when I get to the end of the uh, the new bridge St Peter's Bridge um, I would normally uh, sort of um, turn right and go to my mother's and I found myself going straight on and 
And it's like, well, hang on a minute, no, I don't have to go up there anymore. And I've, the weirdest thing as well is when I'm walking around the supermarket doing my own shopping, um, I'll get halfway down the aisle that I've just been down and suddenly realise I've put two or three items in there that I would normally have any sight. No, I don't want these. These, these are what I would have bought for my mother. So it is taking some getting used to. Um, but I'm kind of getting there. Um, so basically I'm asking you all to bear with me if uh, things seem a little uneven uh, with the videos. I do apologise. It's just going to take a while to get my head back in uh, into all this again. But uh, I am getting there. But thanks for that, uh, Steve. Um, you put, I was surprised to hear you don't like extreme violence. Why? <laughs> I think I've just become sort of a little bit oversensitive to it. Um, Obviously, we had violence back in the 70s and the 80s when I used to do a lot of my film watching, but it was nothing like it is today. Um, it's like when you watch something like The Godfather and you compare that, the violence in that, to the violence in something like Casino or Goodfellas. It, it's on another level. Um, and whereas, you know, in the 70s and 80s, I would sort of watch films a little bit like this, but not, not the way I do now. Um, I find really, really graphic violence really, really hard to stomach. And I know people take the piss out of it because I check the parents' guide on everything and this, that and the other. Um, but it has basically saved me from watching some truly horrible movies. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not a great fan of it. And I think it is an age thing. Um, I think in my early days I could take all that violence, but I, I just can't now. I just can't watch anything that's just too graphic and I can't and that's TV programs as well um, so uh, let's see I don't mind it at all as long as the people deserve it two films that spring to mind are Brawl in Cell Block 99 and Bone Tomahawk you would not be able to stomach not a chance there is a scene in Bone Tomahawk that even disturbed me I've seen Bone Tomahawk um, if you go back through my videos I actually did um, a review of Bone Tomahawk and I basically explained in no uncertain terms the reasons why I would never ever watch it again. <laughs> it's a horrible movie. Um, I'm surprised I got past the scene with the broken leg where they're resetting that guy's broken leg. Um, I had to turn the set, well I didn't have to turn it down, I had to mute it because there was no way that, that I could have heard that crunch and then the scream that went with it. And as for the scene that you're talking about, uh, that even caught you by surprise, I know the bit that you mean. Um, this is the bit where the guy's hung upside down. I won't go any further unless you've not seen it. Um, but yeah, I, I do remember thinking, watching that, it, I'd already read about it. I knew about it because a lot of people have um, sort of talked about it on various posts and blogs and stuff like this. So I knew pretty much what was coming. I just didn't realise it would look quite like that um, it was horrible I actually had to take a break I had to turn it off and come away from it for 15 minutes and I even debated you know you know what am I actually going to make, make it through to the end of this um, but I thought you know what you've got sort of I think that was about hour and 20 sort of hour and 10 minutes into it I thought you've come this far you might as well watch it so I watched it and the end of it was pretty horrible but nothing like that so I do know what you mean and I have seen Bone Tom Tomahawk Brawling Cell Block 11 I don't think I would touch with the barge pole um, I listened to a couple of podcasts um, a few weeks ago uh, where a couple of guys were talking about how brilliant this movie was um, and I thought oh right okay and they were also talking about how brutal it was um, and I thought right okay so it's heading over to the parents guide as usual um, and later, if I, if I think on, I'll read out a list of the reasons why I will never, ever tackle Brawl in Cell Block 11 or 99 or whatever it is. Vince Vaughn is in it. Now, I like Vince Vaughn as an actor. Um, I thought he played Norman Bates brilliantly in Gus Van Sant's um, remake of Psycho. I thought he was superb in that. But I am fairly certain, if, if in fact I'm 100% certain, I would not make it through. Brawl, brawl in cell block 99 definitely not but I'll explain why a little bit later um, where are we uh, you say I should have made notes there were other things you said on there that I was going to mention but I can't remember my mind is getting old sadly <sighs> no, 
I couldn't do this without notes, Steve. I could not do it. I tell you now, absolutely not. I've got them in front of me, as everybody knows. They're on a, like a Word document. Um, I sort of update them every night so that I don't have to, uh, you know, do it all on a Sunday morning. Um, I've got it all in great big typeface, so I don't even have to give it all this and looking at it through the glasses and that. Um, but no, I couldn't do it without notes, so I totally, totally get that. Um, but you say, but I will tune in next week and be better prepared. So to wrap this up, I will say thank you again, Tony, and hope to have more discussions in whatever pops up in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for that, um, Steve. Really appreciate it. And I'm, I'm so pleased that you're joining in with the posts and commenting on the posts and this, that and the other. Um, you're the first new member that we've had in quite a few months. Um, there was a glut of them probably a year or two back when it was there were quite a few people joining and this, that and the other. And most of them didn't comment. Um, I mean, the group has got its core members, as you will, as you will sort of get used to um, over the... Uh, over the coming weeks you've got um, Jason who's kind of the uh, the linchpin of it all <laughs> you've got Guy uh, you've got Chris you've got Caroline you've got Dave uh, you've got Mark uh, Steve Mack our criterion guy um, so there's, there's there's one or two members that probably seven or eight um, that post regularly um, and then the rest of them just sort of post occasionally or comment on posts and this, that and the other. But I'm really pleased that you're joining in, mate. And I'm pleased that you're enjoying the content and all that. So, um, And also that you've enjoyed the video. That's uh, good to know. Uh, so cheers for that, Steve. Mark, we were talking about pizzas. Um, my pizza go-to is called a Bombay Bad Boy. It's Cajun chicken, donna meat and green chilies. Then a pot of chilli sauce and garlic mayo for dipping and presumably a gallon of ice water to wash it down with. <laughs> my God, my mouth would be a blaze if I ate anything like that. Not a massive fan of um, spicy foods. Uh, I keep people, people keep asking me why I don't try curries and this, that and the other. Um, I have had a curry once, a very, very mild one. And I did try um, a very sort of spicy one and absolutely loathed it because my mouth was still burning hours afterwards um, and that was only for a couple of mouthfuls so um, not a great fan of spicy ones I, I may try that Bombay bad boy where's that from is that um, pizza hut because I don't remember seeing anything like that on the Papa John's menu but uh, yeah pizzas I'm, I'm a bit traditional with things like that I do like um, Hawaiian Rob will have cheese and tomato I don't mind barbecue chicken um, stuff like that uh, but as soon as we get into curries and things like that it's not really for me so Steve Mack our criterion guy we were talking about um, my chaplain challenge uh, a couple of weeks ago and I forgot to read this out Steve um, last week I do apologize um, and I was basically saying that um, I set myself a challenge to watch every Charlie Chaplin movie right from the beginning the shorts the first ones he did right through to the last one which i believe he directed didn't star in um it's quite a challenge there are quite a few um and i was basically asking is it worth me upgrading to the blu-rays because i've got a lot of them um on dvd and i was looking at buying um the sna box set and the mutual box set and a few others um, and I asked whether it would be worth me upgrading and you put um, I think you'll be fine Tony with the chaplains you have uh, the Criterion chaplains are 4k digital restorations on the blu-ray it doesn't detract and for continuity you'll be better off collecting the UK releases the only real benefit the Criterion releases um, have are the extra features containing biographies commentaries and some of his earlier short films which I'm fairly sure I will have um, on the uh, the Keystone box set that I've got and also on the SNA and the Mutual box sets when I get them. Uh, so I'm not overly sort of fussed about sort of extras and stuff like that. Um, so thanks for that, Steve. That's kind of confirmed what I, I kind of hoped is that I, I wasn't going to need to sort of upgrade Chaplin movies to Blu-ray. Um, I mean, these movies are mostly sort of 80, 90 uh, years old and more. Um, so, I mean... It's all very well getting them on Blu-ray and 4K and this and the other if you have, haven't already got them on DVD. But um, to me, I, I wouldn't upgrade to Blu-ray on anything from, say, 
sort of 1940 backwards even though I have got the Blu-ray of King Kong from 1933 and it is stunning um, but it's not something I would make a habit of um, and I've always said that I would not be replacing all of my Blu-rays with 4Ks now that I've got the uh, the setup and I, and I won't be um, the only ones I'm going to buy on 4K are probably new ones and also um, ones that will actually benefit from the format things with um, sort of sweeping vistas and special effects and all that sort of thing um, I'll upgrade those but not not all the others it, it just isn't worth it to me because who, know, who the hell knows what's going to come along next um, let's see what else have we got here Steve uh, oh Reacher oh Reacher Reacher will not die um, I started watching Reacher there are some violent moments but it's, but it's so quick you don't really see too much detail but I like how it's going so far <sighs> well, I'll come back to Reacher in a minute because I think Gareth's got a few things to say about Reacher as well. Um, I've not watched any of it yet for obvious reasons, um, but uh, maybe I'll feel brave enough to tackle the first episode, but whether I'll get further than that, who the hell knows. Um, and you also mentioned uh, we have a major meltdown in Criterion Land over the train spotting packaging. What a furore. What's going on there? We need to know. Um, yeah, let us know what's happening with that, Steve. Thanks for that. Gareth, we're on Reacher again. Reacher's violence is no worse than any 90s action. And if you read their parents' guide, you'd wonder how they got released. Um, throw a couple of titles at me, Gareth. I'm curious about this now. Um, I know that the parents' guide can sometimes make things sound probably worse than they are. Um, but it is, it, it is literally a parents' guide. It, it, it's more aimed at kids than sort of adults sort of thing i don't know i mean it, it it's something that i will always do um as i said last week if anybody throws a title at me and i get the inkling that i'm not going to enjoy it due to its violent content I, I will always check on it just to see what it is i'm letting myself in for um i can't see the point nowadays in putting a film on if i know for a fact i'm not going to watch it i.e human centipede um, and quite a few others um, they're just not my kind of thing anymore uh, but yeah I'd be curious to know which 90s action movies you're talking about Gareth so chuck a couple of titles at me dude um, the action happens so fast you probably won't register most of the damage or oh, we're back on Reacher again <laughs> if you watch the first episode and see if you like the character then see if you want to continue um, the carnage is nowhere near Rambo 4 level and more John Wick not really keen on John Wick to be honest I've not seen any of them but the bits I've seen it's not something that I, I just don't think it's me um, and as for Rambo 4 I barely made it through it <laughs> I think that was a challenge remember challenge Tony when we used to do that I'm sure somebody challenged me to watch Rambo 4 um, and I watched it and it was it was bloody nasty it was really horrible um, but I just about made it through it um, but if it's the carnage in what you're saying is the carnage in Reacher is nowhere near, near as bad as Rambo 4 I don't know um, I mean Rambo I enjoyed the first one First Blood um, I would love to see the following two again um, part two and Rambo 3 don't know whether I'd want to go any further than that though I've fairly I've pretty much seen them all I think I've seen Ram I know I've seen Rambo 4 I've seen the one where is um, niece gets kidnapped by the drug cartel down in South America or wherever it was I saw that one that was pretty nasty um, but I've not really gone was the one called Last Blood I don't know whether I've seen that one or not um, but again they're not really my kind of movies but in the early 80s I'd have watched stuff like that I'd have loved it um, it's just now I'm, I prefer something a little gentler <laughs> not quite so nasty uh, so thanks for that Gareth Lee Forever Young is a great movie, Mr. Harris. I have actually got a copy and I will be taking a look at it. Um, that sounds um, much more like me, let's put it that way. Um, given the choice between watching an episode of Reacher and watching Forever Young, I know exactly which one I would go for. Um, the ending of The Mist is horrific. I don't think anybody saw it coming. Um, we, You get a certain image in your head of what a Stephen King adaption looks like. Um... And I did watch The Mist a long, long time ago. And it's one of those endings where you can kind of see it coming a bit. But you think, no, no, they won't do that. 
and then they do. It's one of the most depressing sort of downer of an ending I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, I definitely watch the movie again, um, but I, at least I'm better prepared for the uh, the last sort of two three minutes. It was pretty horrible, pretty nasty. Don't know whether the book ended up like that, um, but it's yeah, it it was pretty nasty. Um, oh, and you <laughs> you were laughing at my use of the word knockers. <laughs> I'll say it again, knockers, because it makes you laugh, doesn't it? Um, what were we talking about? Jamie Lee Curtis, that was it. We were talking about Trading Places, weren't we? And the fact that I hadn't seen it. And I think Guy commented that he remembered two um, very good things about Trading Places. And I basically said it wouldn't be Jamie Lee Curtis's knockers, would it? Bristol's, there's another one for you. <laughs> I can almost see you there now, giggling away. Child. Um, Sweeney Reboot, rubbish. Wouldn't say it was rubbish, it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be. Um, as I said last week, uh, take Ben Drew out of it and it probably would have worked better. I don't know. It's. I mean, the last 45 minutes was just balls to the wall action. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Really, really good. Um, and as long, as long as I kept reminding myself that it's, you know, it's not... It's not the 70s Sweeney that you remember. Um, I mean, obviously, when you're watching remakes and reboots and this, that and the other, your mind is going to cast back to who was in it and what was in it and what happened in it. Um, but that one, it just... as The movie as a whole didn't work for me. Would I watch it again? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but I certainly didn't feel the need to hold on to the, uh, the Blu-ray, as I'm fairly sure... Um, it's readily available on pretty much any streaming platform so there's no point in keeping it um but it just wasn't what i was hoping it was going to be i'm glad i got the chance to watch it finally um but watching it again probably not but you obviously didn't like it at all um but like i said last week given the choice between watching that and one of the sweeney movies from the 70s the actual spin-off movies from the series i'd go for those anytime anytime um and as much as Ray Winston was perfect as um, Jack Regan, he was slightly over the top horrible. Um, and if I live to be 100, I don't ever want to see Ray Winston with his fat gut humping some bird again. Not ever, because it was pretty nasty. <laughs> so, right, I'm going to take a quick break, folks, because the dog is just outside that door. <laughs> so I'll be back in a sec. And we're back. I love that dog to bits, but God knows she picks her times. <laughs> so where were we? Uh, Scott. Um, excellent video, Tony. Loved it, mate. Thanks, Scott. Um, totally, agree, totally agree with you on the opening theme of Cannibal Holocaust. It's a really nice tune. The soundtrack is the best thing about the film, and it's actually quite deceiving. You're not kidding. Um, you've got this really nice, slightly surreal tune um, playing over these sweeping vistas of the jungle. Um, and you have no idea what is down the road after that. Um, yeah, I would agree the soundtrack is probably the best part about it. Um, it's not a movie that I basically want to see again. Um, I did see it in the early 80s, as I said last week, on a third, fourth, or maybe fifth generation VHS copy. Uh, the copy of the movie was lousy. The film itself was vile, horrible piece of entertainment. Um, and it's not one that I'd ever want to put myself through again. So um, I don't envy you, Scott, watching it on um, high def. Absolutely not. Um, I've heard the Blu-ray transfer is absolutely stunning, um, but I would not. Uh, I would not want to see those animal scenes again. Never in a million years. So I quite get that. Invasion USA is a great Chuck Norris film. Highly recommend it. Um, I'm definitely going to be taking that one in. Um, and also some of his earlier ones, um, uh, was it the two I mentioned last week, The Good, uh, good Guys Wear Black um, and An Eye for an Eye, uh, which are the two I remember seeing advertised on TV when they came to Burton Odeon. I think they were a double bill as well. Um, so there's those two that I would like to take in. I've already got a copy of Missing in Action 
um, thanks to Jason. I'll be coming on to that one in a minute, actually. Um, missing in action. So that's another one I'll be taking in. Uh, so if anybody else has got any uh, Chuck Norris suggestions to throw my way, just chuck them, uh, chuck them over and I'll uh, have a look. Um, I'm quite surprised you haven't seen Trading Places. I don't know why you surprised. <laughs> The, gap, the gaps in my viewing habits, especially with the mid to late 80s, um, is it's like the Grand Canyon. It's massive. <laughs> so, um, but hopefully now we'll get more of a time, uh, more of a chance to um, sort of catch up on these movies. I found Trading Places on Paramount Plus, uh, which is one of my subscription channels. So I will be taking a look at it. Um, so yeah, I will be yeah, catching up with that one. Uh, you put, I think you would love it. It's such a great comedy from the 80s, one of my favourites. It's one I've heard a lot about. I know very little about it, apart from the fact it, the fact it is um, him trading places with a, a rich guy or something um, and living his life, that kind of thing. But um, above that, I have no idea. So I will be taking that one in. Um, Jason Kerr, our Ginger Ninja. Um, I was offered a piece of advice uh, last week when we were talking about Reacher which basically said get a kebab and sit down and watch it um, and Jason says get a kebab <laughs> you might lose your kebab if you eat watching those scenes in Reacher might need something a bit stronger it's a brutal show uh, but it is done so well and those scenes are fairly quick brace yourself for those scenes and enjoy the show for everything else I think you just turned me off it again <laughs> I'd just about come to terms with the fact that maybe, maybe, possibly, I could give the first episode a go. But I really can't see the point. I really can't. It's, it's not my kind of a show anyway. Um, and I would basically only be watching it because people are daring me to watch it. So um, I'll have a think about it. If I accidentally bump into it on one of the streaming channels, I think it's Prime, isn't it? I may just be brave enough to watch the first one, but believe me, that remote will not be straying, it's just straying any further than arm's length away from me. Um, and I'll make sure I know where the mute button is as well. Breaking legs to fit somebody into the boot of a car. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> so, yeah, it's highly unlikely I'll be watching it, Jace, but we shall see. Um, you were talking about, ad well, I was talking about advertisements as well. Um, I loathe advertisements. It's why I originally went to pay TV but when they started sneaking them in over here, I moved to uh, other methods. I use those other methods. Not as much as I used to do, Jace, I've got to admit, but um, I would rather watch something now uh, on streaming or by the 4K or the Blu-ray rather than um, use those other methods. Um, but advertisements, oh, God. It, it's on the back, obviously, what we are talking about last week. You, me basically getting the notice from Prime saying that uh, if you would like to go ad free, it's only two ninety nine, and you know, once my blood had finished boiling, I thought, do you know what? I can't stand adverts in in films anyway. So for the sake of three quid, fuck it, I'll go for it. So I did, um, but I just hope that the rest of them don't fall suit, uh, follow suit because I I certainly won't be going ad free on any others if they decide to start introducing commercials into the films like the BFI and stuff like that no way um, but yeah uh, yeah, I was not uh, exactly in favour of it um, you put as well now I have Netflix but they have two options a cheaper option with ads or a slightly more expensive version with no ads but it's all about making money which it is, that's all it is it, it's a greed thing um, and it pisses me off because it's like you know, you want to subscribe to these things, but they're not exactly making it easy for you. Do you know what I mean? It's like I've still got two, maybe three channels that I would like to subscribe to, but I will be looking into it very carefully before I do it. Mubi, Curzon, um, there was another one, I can't remember what it is now. But yeah, I'll, I'll be looking into it very carefully. I'm not going to be jumping into them now, you, you know, if I, if I get the slightest inkling that they're going to be introducing adverts in the near future. Um, yeah, it's not good. Speaking of Salem's Lot, I have the original and the remake. And the remake was filmed uh, near where I used to live. Um, only reason I got it was to see places I knew. <laughs> I think if they filmed something in Burton, um, I would do the same. I believe Shane Meadows has filmed um, one of his movies in, or partly in Swaddling Coat, which is just sort of three, four miles up the road. 
Um, so Jason, you're the Shane Meadows expert. Which movie is it? Have I already got it? Um, I showed two off. Uh, was it last week or the week before two that I bought? Once Upon a Time in the Midlands um, and A Room for Romeo Brass. Is either one of those the one that's uh, set in Swaddling Coat? Because I will take a look. Um, so yeah, I kind of get that, Jace. Um, and I'd be tempted to go on to uh, YouTube to take a look at um, one of those uh, you know, filming locations then and now videos and hopefully they'll have done one for Salem's Lot and I can get a look at where you live. Um, so uh, let's see, Chuck Norris, ah yes, Missing in Action, absolute classic. Glad you enjoyed the review and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, um, I've got hold of Missing in Action through those um, methods that we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be having a look at that one. Um, I seem to remember there was a second and also a third. And I remember Braddock 3 missing in action. Was, was it called Braddock missing action 3? I remember it being in the video shop because the uh, the VHS cover, the big box cover, was black and white. It was a black and white photograph of Chuck Norris. So I do remember seeing that one, but I never watched the film, obviously. Um, but I will take a look at missing in action and I'll let you know. Uh, sort of how I get on with it um, and you also talked about Slumber Party Massacre I found it on um, Shudder uh, so I will be taking a look at that um, the remake is Woke Shit <laughs> yeah why doesn't that surprise me why do they do it why, why, why do we feel the need to continually pander to these people that are offended by everything uh, oh, no I really don't want to get into this <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't surprise me that it's woke, um, and I certainly won't be watching it now you've told me that. Um, it'll be interesting watching the original uh, to see which scenes um, look as if they need cleaning up for today's audiences. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know on that when I watch it. I'll let you know whether I can spot the bits that, uh, you know, oh, they couldn't possibly do that nowadays. I mean, you could say that about any movie from I would say from the 90s backwards no movie from the 90s backwards is 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 you know suitable for the modern day um they're such delicate little flowers aren't they well, why do we even talk about them um right Jason P my god this, this is more like a manuscript Jace thanks ever so much mate it must take you ages to type these things out <laughs> so let's have a look just bear with me uh Jason. Morning, Jace. Just watched the first half hour. I'll watch the rest later, which you did. Um, as for last week's video, I never noticed you were struggling, mate. I think you did a great job as per. Thanks, Jace. I do appreciate that, but it was not easy last week. <laughs> and it didn't go well uh, as far as I thought it didn't anyway. Um, and if I'm being honest, this is the second attempt at today's video. I actually did 25 minutes earlier on. Um, and thought it went absolutely terrible. I was stammering all over the place, falling over words. It was a nightmare. So um, it's it, it's still not where it needs to be. But as I say, if you just bear with me a few weeks, hopefully um, I'll be able to get myself uh, back on track. But you you guys don't seem to see anything wrong with it. It's it's only me that watches and back and thinks. You know, well, I think back on it, and it's like that was terrible, terrible, awful, really bloody awful. And then I watch it back, and it's like, oh, actually, it's probably not that bad. And and then you guys come on and say there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So maybe it's just me, as per usual. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Avatar. Oh God, yeah, your favourite movie. Yeah, I've seen it. All bastard three hours of it. That's why I slag it off so much. I didn't realise you'd actually seen it. I thought this was one of those movies that you'd just seen sort of clips of, trailers of, and thought, no, that's not for me. Um, which you do get movies like that when you watch the trailer and you just look at it and think nah, nah not really so um you know I, I i'm pleased you've actually watched the whole three hours of it i haven't got round to it yet um i i just want to see it to see how visually stunning it is and whether it's as good as i've heard it is um so i will be taking a look at it but again it depends what i get sort of three three hours in a row to watch it um don't worry about being a hermit mate if i've nowhere to go i cannot get dressed for days with the wife being how she is too if we're invited anywhere and they need confirmed numbers we have to say no because the wife doesn't know how she is going to 
going to be that day. So last year we probably went out about five times. That's it. We bloody loved lockdown. I did. I adored it. Um, I know the circumstances, circumstances behind lockdown were not the best, um, but the actual theory of it not being pretty much allowed to go anywhere, perfect for me because I never went anywhere anyway. Same as you. Um, and you do tend to feel a bit antisocial when you do it, but like you, I just don't want to anymore. I really, really don't. Um, and my biggest fear is is people coming up to me saying, do you fancy going somewhere? And it's like, I, I, I don't actually know. Um, so maybe I'm an antisocial old sod, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just not one for going out anymore. Whether it'll change or not, I don't know. Um, I think it's mostly happened because I've not really had the time to go anywhere. Um, with obviously looking after my mum and not getting back until sort of five, six o'clock most nights. You know, what the thought of just getting changed and actually going out was just not something that I wanted to do. Um, and now I think it's going to be a very difficult habit to break because I've been like that for pretty much 12 years. So we shall see. And I'm not ruling out the um, possibility of a cinema trip to uh, Barton Marina or wherever it is. I'm not ruling out that at all because... Uh, there will come a point, you know, someday when I will think, you know, I really, really would like to do that. Um, but I can't be rushed into it. it. It'll happen when it happens and that's it. Uh, you put, we're going out for Valentine's night for a curry, um, but going for the earliest possible sitting. Yeah, so you don't have to bas basically be in a room with too many people. And I'm the same with that. I am terrible. My, I, I, I mean... And I will sit here and I will talk for an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours I've done it for. And it looks easy. But if I walk into a room full of people, it happened at my mum's funeral. I actually went up to the house and it was full of relatives and neighbours. Do you know what? I couldn't think of anything to say to them. I really couldn't. They talked to me and I just kept the answers so short. I must have sounded really ignorant and pretty horrible. But my social skills have just gone to part over the last what 10 15 years and it's I, I don't know how to get them back again um so you know with me sitting here talking to you guys that's easy to me or easier to me um than actually walking into a room full of people and i know other people who feel this way dave Lowe, you're very much the same you're not one for crowds um i'm okay at work because i work with these people every day they're more like my family um, so I'm perfectly okay with them but you put me in a room full of strangers people that I don't know it doesn't work so uh, you ended it with Forever Young is a great movie I will be taking that one in absolutely I will be taking that one in I'm really looking forward to it um, mostly because I know nothing about it absolutely nothing um, apart from it looks like it's set in the Second World War or is, is it? I don't know I'll let you know on that one uh, P.S pizzas again has to be cajun and tandoori chicken on a pizza tandoori chicken that's curry isn't it? no not for me well i don't know maybe maybe no no not really <laughs> and that was the first half of the video then you came back a little bit later um and said brilliant video cheers jace appreciate that right netflix tried the ad tried the ad price thing it didn't work so they scrapped it Although Netflix didn't put the price up, they kept it the same. Uh, but if you had adverts in, they would knock £3 off your monthly bill. Nobody bo bothered, so that was scrapped. So I'm going to cancel Prime now. I have Netflix through Sky Q, so it's only £6 a month. I don't blame you, mate. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that I don't do anything or go anywhere, I, I wouldn't have any hesitation in cancelling Prime. Um, but I kind of like to have all these films at my fingertips, even if I don't actually watch them. <laughs> It sounds silly, doesn't it? So, I, but I do get where you're coming from with that. Um, also, my ring doorbell has gone up by fifteen pounds a year. Keep me need to get one of these things, um, basically, so I can see who's outside the door. So you're I never answer the door anyway. Rob always answers it. I never ever answer the door. I just don't, um, because I'm afraid I'll have to have a conversation with somebody. And that sounds awful. That's just how I am nowadays. Um, let's see. Uh, that I won't cancel because as soon as someone steps on my grass or drive, my phone goes off. So bloody handy if anyone comes up the drive at night to do anything. Yeah, yeah, it's that kind of a world we live in now, isn't it? Although I live in a nice quiet street, so all is good. Same as where I am. It's, it's, it's 
relatively nice and quiet so I probably wouldn't have the need for one of those things but uh, if they come down in price maybe Oppenheimer spelt wrong I know you always spell it wrong Jay. actually you haven't that's oh you have yeah <laughs> he's only on for three hours um, so that's a little bit better for some reason I've got it in my head that it was three and a half to four hours so um, I was going to try and watch that um, this week uh, because I've had this week off but I've had other things to uh, um, sort of uh, sort out this week um, but the next holiday that I get or the next day that I get where I've got three hours in a row to watch something Oppenheimer is going to be the one Invasion USA starring Chuck Norris is my favourite one I definitely want to watch this one because I've heard so much about it I really enjoyed Jason Kerr's uh, Ginger Ninja's review on that one um, so yes I will be taking Invasion USA in uh, apparently there was, there was a sequel for it but Chuck wasn't interested so the film was given a different name Avenging Force starring Michael Dudikoff I remember a lot of Michael Dudikoff movies um, in the video shop when I worked there I think American Ninja was one of them um, there were quite a few I can't remember any of the others but there were a handful of them um, I don't know whether I'd watch any. Maybe I would because I'm going through a bit of an 80s nostalgia thing at the moment. Um, I've ordered Wonka out on 4th of March from HMV. They normally deliver the movies early on a Saturday, so I'm hoping to be watching that on Saturday the 2nd. I almost certainly will um, grab a copy of that on 4K um, because I get the feeling it will look absolutely awesome um, in ultra high def. So... Uh, Maybe I should let you let you uh, sort of tell me exactly what it's like before I go for it, but I'm, I'm fairly sure I will enjoy it. But it absolutely will not match the original version with Gene Wilder. It it just can't. Nothing can. Um, but as a standalone thing, Timothy Shalom Shalom May is it? I, I might give it a go. Um, but if I do, it will be on blue um, on 4K. So uh, read the Sweeney. Right. If you want a brilliant cop show set in the 70s, then you need to watch Life on Mars. Gene Hunt is a copper we need for today's society. I quite agree. Absolutely agree with that. Um, then you want the sequel, Ashes to Ashes, set in the 80s. These are just brilliant TV. 40 episodes, 16 of Life on Mars and 24 of Ashes to Ashes. Storylines are just fantastic. In fact, just thinking about it, I need to watch again this year. I know 100% you will be hooked after the first episode. The music and nostalgia is, well, just pure brilliance. There you go. I've also got series two. I'm three episodes in and I absolutely love it. It's another of those that I regret not watching many, many years ago. Um, Gene Hunt is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. He would not survive five minutes in today's police force. Because, as we've already said, it's all woke and uh, it's just pathetic. But back in the 70s, this is how police work went down. So, yes, I am on to Life on Mars. Guy will be, re Guy will be relieved about this because he's been on about Life on Mars for years. Um, so, yes, I will be taking that in. I'm three episodes in and absolutely loving it. So, I do listen to you guys. Uh, Threads, who were talking about the fact that you were... Uh, um, I thought you maybe well you thought you needed to take a break. Um, I don't need to take a break. Um, I just ran out of ideas. I don't want us to keep repeating the same movies over and over again. And I thought only a few weeks ago, like you said, somebody will say something or comment or ask a question, and I will think there's a thread in there somewhere. Um, I I don't doubt it for a second, Jace. Um, well, someone in the last week has said something. Uh, that made me smile and thought now there's a fucking challenge if ever I heard one so fear not folks I have a new one lined up for 2025 I never doubted it for a second Jace it'll probably last a few months too it'll be completely different to anything we've done we can all join in I just need to tinker with it and give it a name and then we can go for it again I knew I knew for a fact you would come up with something because you always do um, so that's that's brilliant news Jace I'm pleased you're not to sort of jacking it in um, because you're too good at this sort of thing to just leave it um, and you put even when I do stop doing threads you know I won't stop posting but if people keep flicking that switch in my head to give me an idea then I can keep doing threads you've got more patience than I have mate um, I do have an idea for the name of the new thread and it did make me laugh so I think I will be sticking with that one so yeah 
good news, brilliant news. I mean, we're only into February of 2024, so it looks like we've got at least another couple of years of uh, you and your wonderful threads. <laughs> so I'm really pleased you've caught with something, mate. I never doubted you for a second. Um, you'll never seen it thread, by the way. Glad you're enjoying it. My Out of Africa DVD came the other day. DVD? You not got that on Blu-ray? Um, I will have a watch of it. I have seen it probably twice, but it was in the 80s. And it was, it, I think it was one of those that I used to put it on in the shop, if I remember right. I'm sure I used to put it on on the video on the shop because it was a long film and I could just leave it running. Um, but I haven't seen it for a while, so I'm, I'm tinkering with the idea of maybe grabbing a Blu-ray copy of that because I bet the African Plains will look absolutely amazing um, on, on high def. So... Uh, Today's, uh, by the way, I read yesterday, Mean Streets, Martin Scorsese. I didn't see that one coming. I saw Mean Streets many, many years ago, but I've only seen it the once. Uh, so I will be taking a look at it. I believe it's on either BFI Player or, or Film 4 at the moment. So I will be watching it again. This is one of um, Scorsese's very early movies. And I think it was his first partnership with uh, Robert De Niro. Harvey Keitel's in it as well. It's one that I definitely want to take a look at. So... Um, even though I've seen Out of Africa and Mean Streets, I will be watching both of them and I will continue to follow you on this journey and I look forward to seeing um, what next week's, uh, next weekend's uh, offering is. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. P.S. Indy Jones, I loved it. Do you see what I mean about watching it on Christmas Day afternoon with a box of Maltesers and Minstrels? Perfect. And it was, absolutely. Um, it was the perfect pizza in a movie night. Absolutely perfect. Um, I just really, really enjoyed it. I went in, not with low expectations, but not expecting to enjoy it as much as I actually did. Uh, so yeah, I was quite relieved when I came out of that and thought that was really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, it was definitely better than Crystal Skull. Um, it wasn't as good as Lost Ark, which it never would be. Um, I just thought it was good. Really, really enjoyed it. So pleased that I finally got the chance to watch it and on 4K as well. So, right, let me just go a little bit further down here. Some random post before I have to uh, take another break in about another six minutes or so. Somebody put on, it's an anonymous random post. I can't remember where I found it. Um, just see what you think of this. All he's written is, I'm going to say it. Idris Elba as Superman. Guys, guys, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know whether he's being serious or whether he's taking the piss or what. I have to be really careful what I say here. I'm really, really careful. Um, Idris Elba as Superman. Okay, so Superman is not a black guy. He never has been. Um... How would it be if we flip this on its head? Um, as we all know, uh, Carl Weathers passed away, sadly, um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I definitely want to see a movie of his called Action Jackson. I remember that coming into the video shop while I was working there and thinking I must watch that and never got round to it. Um, so, yeah, that's one that I would like to see. And I thought he was excellent in the Rocky films. But um, So Carl Weathers uh, passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, how would it be um, if Hollywood announced that they are going to do um, a, a movie biography of Carl Weathers starring Chris Hemsworth? How would that be? Or Martin Luther King? Uh, am I just being... Please tell me I'm not being racist because I'm not. I just... I, I heard rumours that Idris Elba was going to be James Bond. How the fuck can that work? Uh, again, I have to be really, really careful what to say because it, it sounds awful and it's not meant to. But, you know, if a character is... Because uh, we're going back to comic books, aren't we? We're going back to comic books of the early sort of, sort of 30s and stuff like that when Superman first sort of came into, the, uh, into being. Um, but he was never, ever... Um, in the comic books he was never ever a, a black guy 
please tell me what you think. Please bear me out on this. Somebody bear me out on this and just, just let me know that you, I'm not being racist. I just, I just don't think it would work because it's not what we're used to seeing. Oh, God, here we go. Now I'm going to get people saying, oh, you're just boring, stayed in the fucking wall. And, uh, no, please. Just somebody talk to me on this one. Just let me know what you think. Idris Elba as Superman, what are your thoughts? And the other post that was put on, or one of them, all 25 James Bond films are to, be, are to stream free on ITVX starting this March. Well, that'll be interesting, won't it? We've seen what they've done with Carry On movies. They cut them. Have they done the same with the Bond movies? No, thank you. I will stick with my uh, Blu-ray box set on that one. Um, I'd be very curious to know whether they do cut them, and if so, which bits they're going to cut out. But as soon as I read that, I thought, you know what? What's the point? What, why bother? If you're not going to screen these things uncut, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Perhaps they are going to screen them uncut, but personally, I don't think so. I think what we're going to get is little tiny bits cut out which you know maybe the majority of people would not notice but me um, having seen these movies multiple times all of them I will spot a cut a mile off and I will like the carry on movies you know you pretty much know the script off by heart you could quote the whole thing so as soon as you I mean ITVX were trimming out whole scenes complete scenes not just lines of dialogue it was a nightmare can't remember which one we watched now, but I think we got about 10 minutes into it and it was like, oh my God, it's cut. Turn it off, just go and get the DVD from in there, we'll watch that. And that was that was how that went. So um, let's see how they uh, they go with that. But um, 25 James Bond films to stream, stream free on ITVX starting this March was not the best news for me. <laughs> Definitely not. So, right, I'm going to take another quick break and I'll be back with you in a few seconds. And we're back. Right, I'm going to wrap this up as quickly as I can. I'll tell you for why. Uh, because neighbours have started moving about on either side. The dog is up and down like a horse draws, barking at everything. Um, so I'm going to try and wrap it up as quickly as possible. And everything that I've not had a chance to do today, um, I will put off until next week, including a massive pile of stuff that I've bought over the last couple of weeks. And it will be added to this week because there's a couple of other bits that, they, uh, that I would like to... Uh, grab hold of um i'll also be talking about uh dave oliver's video i've got it all the notes here top 32 slasher movies um i'll be giving my uh, thoughts on um that list including uh some of my favorite slasher movies um i've also got uh let's see a handful of uh my favorite michael kane movies which was on the back of a list that I read of his favourite movies of his own. Uh, so I thought I'd sort out my favourite uh, Michael Caine movies. I'll also be talking next week about um, some of the stuff that's been cracking off on TV Zone, including Guy's uh, TV theme thread, uh, Mark's uh, top 100 TV programmes. Um, so I'll be going back through those um, and having a look at the ones that I remember and chatting about those. Um, just a couple of other bits before I go. Um, I finally finished, well, I say finally finished, I only started them last week. As I say, I'm getting more time to watch movies nowadays. This, the Planet of the Apes original five movies. Absolutely loved them, really loved them. I've seen the original Planet of the Apes many, many times. Um, but the rest of the sequels I've seen probably once, if at all. Um, so it was great to catch up with them. Um, there was, let me see, we had Beneath the Planet of the Apes, which was good. Escape from the Planet of the Apes, which was brilliant up until the last half of it when it just turned really dark. And the ending of this that movie is absolutely brutal as hell. Um, I don't know whether you remember it or not, but it was pretty nasty. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, which was horrible. That was a really horrible movie. I'll talk about these more in depth next week. Um, and then Battle for the Planet of the Apes, which as far as I'm concerned got it back on track again but I really enjoyed watching these um, so the next port of call is the TV series which I've not seen for ages this was made about 1974 um, and I do remember loving it back in the day but whether it'll hold up now I don't know um, but I will be taking a look at that and then moving on to the Mark Wahlberg reboot 
from the early 2000s which everybody hates um, I didn't exactly think very much of it um, but I, I'll have a look at it and then I'll move on to the the uh, uh, the latest trilogy which I think is is it Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet and then War of the Planet of the Apes um, which I've seen them all but quite a while ago uh, so I'm going to be taking those in another movie I'm going to be watching this week is the first movie from this uh, 1001 Movies That Shot the World I'm going to be working my way through this book at random, I'm not going to be going in order and I think a lot of them I probably will have seen um, but the first one is this one Eyes Without a Face the only thing I know about Eyes Without, Without a Face is the fact that Billy Idol did um, a song called Eyes Without a Face now I don't know whether it was actually related to this movie uh, but I intend to find out but this is the first movie from that book that I've picked out and thought I'll have a go at that I bought this quite a while ago I can't remember why I bought it because I've never seen it I'd not heard of it um, but it's going to be the first one from that book so right I'm going to wrap it up there now guys before this dog comes bombing down again as I say everything that I've not done this week I'll carry over to next week um, and I would like to keep them under an hour anyway so it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's no biggie but thanks ever so much for joining me if you've enjoyed uh, the video obviously give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that sort of thing um, hope you have a brilliant week hope you've enjoyed this video um, and I'll be back with you around about the same time next week have a great week folks and I will talk to you all again soon take care Ta -da.